Welcome to the Festival of Storytellers. can't tell you how excited I am to be on right now. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks of, of excitement, uh, getting prepared, and I've done a lot of things in my life, but this has got to be close to the top. Thank you. And Reed is magnet, and I thank you, John, for um, putting this forth and taking the chance on us authors in, in, uh, in presenting this out to, to the world. I've, I've enjoyed this immensely, Joanne. Ellie, so have I. Thank you for, for who you are, and thank you, Reader's Magnet. You all are beautiful, and you've worked so very hard, and we are blessed. We, we are. are. I thank everybody that's involved with this process because we know writers need readers and writers need publishers. We thank Readers Magnet and everybody that's involved. I love Readers Magnet. They say, we share your stories with the world. everything in the book um um so for those of you who are, who are just tuning in for the first time on my in my author booth um i was i am a former cultist now born again believer in jesus christ and uh i'm so filled and uh, I just love the Lord with every fiber of my being. Um, but where I am now is is not where I've always been. I I've, I've been through the darkest places that a man can walk through, and uh, Christ was with me in in that pit. Uh, so. One pit specifically that I was in was uh, the year 2011. Um, that year was insane. Uh, that was the year that I wrote the most poetry I've ever written in my life. Because there was... It was like there was a war be that was raging between my heart and my head. They did not agree. And my mind was being tormented by depression, by suicidal thoughts, by doubting. Uh, the things I was doing, which was good because there wasn't, it caused me to doubt my, the, the cult I was involved in, um, 
I was homeless for six months. <laughs> a little known fact about this book right here, Darkness Before the Dawn, which is in fact my first book. It was my first book. Published it 10 years ago. Um, so I was homeless for the majority of the time I was writing this book. I lived in a tent for two months at a lake. Um, my mom even lived there with me for a month because she had nowhere to go as well. Um, I was 19 years old, kicked out of my family's home, um, and couldn't find nobody to take me in. Uh, that is until uh, the end, toward the end of the summer, my friend's mom offered me to stay in uh, an upper room of uh, of their shed, the, their storage shed. It was more like a barn, but it wasn't in the country. It was in a uh, town called Likens, which actually uh, most of this book took place in that town. Um, and that story is in this novel. Um, from Darkness and Light, it's in his memoir. Um, that's my testimonial novel about how the Lord saved me from the the darkness of the occult. But um, going back to my uh, other book, I was homeless, and um, my friend's mom, uh, she was on her way to drop me off uh, at at uh, the entrance to the woods where I was going to set up camp, and she saw me in my darkest moment. Not that whole year was my darkest moment in that to that point in my life. I lost a lot, a lot that year, including my including my nephew and a miscarriage. Um, actually, that guy, um, yeah, had a name tattooed in my hand. Um, but I, uh, yeah, so I lost a lot that year, and I was gonna go live, find a cave, as long as I had shelter. Um, that's all that mattered to me at that time. But she saw me in that lowest point and invited me to live uh, in her shed, that shed, um, and they ran an extension cord to give me, uh, to the shed to give me electricity. And I stayed there for three months. Uh, and in that time, I would have, I would wake up in the middle of the night with heaping of sweat, just pouring, pouring out of me, uh, because I, I was, I would wake up at three in the morning with nightmares of being running from something, from like either a monster or running into the depths of the sea and, uh, it, it was every single night I would wake up from a nightmare and I was being tormented. My mind just couldn't escape the darkness that the impending doom that was looming over my soul. So in my moment of brokenness, in my times of sorrow, in my grief, in my insomnia, in my sadness, I just, I wrote poetry. And in a way, God used poetry to save my life. Um, this isn't just me writing down uh, a fancy word that comes to mind. No, this is uh, more than that to me. This is an, this book is an extension of myself. I poured out my heart, my soul, my mind into this book of poetry. Uh, mm. and it told a story when I was done writing it I didn't I didn't know I was writing a book uh, hold on I have a comment have you ever considered writing under a sodium and why or why not oh uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit um So, 
Um, okay, so um, hold on. I, I don't want to lose focus on this. Um, I'm, about, I'm about to read a poem, and uh, but yeah, if you can elaborate on what you mean by that, that that'll be great. Um, so. Well, there's a poem that I want to read to you guys to show you that, yeah, here it is. To show you the depths of what I've been through. Um, um, so I'll answer that question in a second. Um, so this one is called Death of My Soul. <laughs> the last enemy to vanquish is death. Death and I will battle for eternity over the soul I no longer possess. The soul beaten and sold. How can there be an afterlife when my heart runs cold? Without my spirit to warm and guide me, how will I reach the light at the end of my road? What of my punishment? I do not know. But a waste, what, what awaits me in judgment may never amount to a city of gold. It's short but sweet, but that shows you uh, the depths of my mindset at the time, where death was just back of me in a corner and I was running from it. And the only way out was to fight, and uh, or so I thought. And I pondered eternity and what would happen to my soul um, after uh, finally after the battle ends and my my spirit passes on and i and i pondered on judgment and uh heaven's case even though i didn't fully believe at that time that that was even real i pondered the question that I, and i talked spoke often about heaven and hell in this book and i just I was searching for the truth, but I don't didn't know what the tr truth was or the path way to find it. Um, now, to answer that question quick, um, um, yes and no. Uh, I pondered on writing a different genre and having a code name like Lemony Snicket's uh, books, but I want to be transparent. I want people to know that they are not alone. I want them to have hope uh, to get out of the darkness, that there is light found in Jesus, Jesus Christ and that he can shine through in and through them into the darkness to bring them out of that place and if i write under a code name it will be put me in a place like uh separated from my reader and i don't want that i want to be among you i want to walk up in the midst of the crowds like jesus did laying his hands on the sick and ministering to the brokenhearted. And I can't do that if I'm pretending I'm not who I am. So that's my viewpoint on that. Um, now, I did at post my post Christ, um, like after my conversion, um, throughout my walk, I did have some ideas for like a uh, horror kind of um, books that I thought, oh, that's going to really interfere with my other my message and i don't want people to take me seriously and this and that so i thought about my co uh doing writing under a code name then um but honestly i if it doesn't glorify christ i'm i don't want to be a part of it because that's not the reason i i was created and i don't want to i don't first don't want to lead anybody astray second um that's a distraction for 
what the Lord really wants me to do. So, um, yeah, so move, moving on. Um, okay. Okay, somebody asked me, what was your hardest scene to write? Um, that's in the context of the book of poetry, which I'm talking about, that that's different because I just wrote and I, I did not write this book in order. Um, actually, how it came together to form, how I, I put all the poetry together in a certain way, it was actually miraculous. Um, because if you read the book cover to cover, it tells a, it tells a story, it tells one single story. Um, but if you take each poem individually, it tells a story of its own. So it's actually very, it could be, I could take this entire book and submit it to a contest for epic poetry because an epic poem is a poem that a very long uh, poem is basically about heroism, basically is what an epic poem is. And this book from cover to cover is an epic poem. But individually, like they are, it's a, there are a collection of poems. So um, the hardest scene to write, um, well, the hardest poem in this context to write was the whole thing, really. Like, and it wasn't, it wasn't hard to write in the fact that it was hard to form the words. No, that this this poetry spewed forth out of me like a a dam whose river just broke through, um, like a river breaking a dam and just pouring out. Um, and then I later went back and like maybe changed a word or two to make sure it made sense. But uh, yeah, so poetry is a lot different than writing a novel. Um, I discovered when I wrote my novel, I did write the poetry first. So I knew poetry before I knew uh, liter actual literature in the aspect of like novel and novellas and uh, things of that sort. Um, but the hardest emotionally to write was a, is, a, is a tie between my poem, My Own Hell, and uh, my other poem, See You in Heaven, <laughs> ironically. Um, one is, My Own Hell is, is a suicide letter, um, a very long, lengthy suicide letter written in poetry formation. Um, and See You in Heaven is uh, the poem for my miscarried daughter's uh, sky. Um, I actually wrote My Own Hell after waking up from a nightmare um, concerning my miscarried, miscarried daughter. And, um, I think that's how I end up writing the, uh, see you in heaven as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to read a, another poem. I got, I'm not sure which one I'm going to read. Actually, I'll read, uh, see you in heaven. Yeah. Since we were just talking about it. Okay, coming up on it right now. There it is. Okay. I never got to hold you, but I've held you in my heart. My love for you has been true before your life could even start. All the hell I've been through, your loss has left the biggest scar. I would have given you the world. Now you're amongst the stars. Daddy's little girl found the light and left the dark. Our love will remain strong as we depart. We're two worlds away, but close by heart. We'll meet again, but in a better place. A place without war war and hate. If the Lord seeks me worthy and changes my fate, then I'll see you again at Heaven's Gate. Mm. Wow, now man, I felt so unworthy to receive Christ's love that it just poured out in every poem that referenced eternity. And 
now I realize I came to realization many years later that only to confess, to repent of your sins and turn to Christ is what gives you eternal life, not any works thriving in our, our own strength. Um, so, yeah, that was a um, definitely a lesson I had to learn uh, over the course of several years. But, um, yeah, 20, 2011, the year of my book is, that was a very hard pressed year for me. Um, I was being, being uh, manipulated by the cult that I was involved in and that actually ultimately led uh, led away for God to reveal to me their schemes and what they were doing so that I could uh, that so that he I would put my faith in him and then he took me out of that and filled me with life life past the brim searching for another poem to read there there's about 40 some poems and i always had to have short stories and quotes in here that <laughs> that really reflects one another um all right so I'm going to read The Crow and the Dove. Oh, so I have a question. Does the family support your career as a writer? Actually, my uh, family is the one that, my family and a couple of close friends are the ones that encouraged me to publish my poetry into a book. And if they didn't do that, I would just, it, it would have never happened because I didn't want, I didn't want to fame from it. I just wanted wanted to write poetry. I needed an outlet at that time, and I just wanted to write. So, so yeah. Um, even if nobody supported me, though, but not everybody does. Um, it's not up to anybody else as to what I do. Uh, chase your dreams, whether or not anybody else is supporting you, because uh, you ne you never know who you're going to reach out there. You never know who needs to hear your story. Your testimony could be the uh, the catalyst for somebody else's breakthrough, and that's the truth. I've seen it so many times in my own life, and I share my own testimony how deeply it impacted another. Uh, even people that I didn't consider it would reach and like they from different walks of life um, that came from different places in life, but they related because they had their own uh, cloud of darkness that they escaped from and their own emotional baggage, which they related to mine that they were delivered and healed from um, or desired to be. All right, so um, I'm going to read The Crow and the Dove. Just a little backstory on this poem. Um, before I was a poet, a poet I was a musician. Um, I, I loved hip-hop. Um, I grew up in a, a small city, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Uh, and right around the time I transitioned into poetry when I wrote the book, like I uh, stopped with, uh, I don't know, it's, I wouldn't say stopped, but we, I was having problems really with uh, public appearance um, concerning music. I didn't have the, the motivation or passion to really get in front of the crowds at that time in my life to really perform the uh, hip hop with the uh, group I was a part of and um when 2011 came around i really transitioned into poetry rather than uh than hip-hop because i enjoyed writing more than speaking um but i'm 
I mean, I'm a lot better at, talk, at speaking now and stuff like that. So um, this poem is a reflection of that, that time in my life where, uh, yeah, poetry and, and music to me are, uh, are two sides of the same coin. So without further to do. She has no pulse, but she flows with life. She holds it together when I'm falling apart and gives me a cause to fight. You have not lived unless you touched her face. You will not breathe until you feel her grace. I, I yearn for the day that I'll make her mine. It must be the only way that my light may shine. She has my unconditional love. She's always on my mind. I'm the crow and she's the dove that opened my eyes. I could have it all if I spread my wings. I pray not to fall and lose everything, but I will take the risk and give her a chance to prove our love. I will fly at my own risk until I reach the clouds above. I will kiss this world goodbye as I achieve greatness. I will fly high until I make it. I'll make it for her and I'll make it for me. My heart is what I give to her and I pray for her and I Uh, can any, can you hear me or see me? Hold on, I'm having problems. Somebody just tried to call me. Hello. Okay, that's. Can you guys see me? Because I'm not seeing me. Okay, so I can't see myself, so I don't know if you guys can see me. But I'm just gonna continue though. We're almost done. Um, <laughs> if, in case you didn't see the last, the last couple of lines, I said, "My heart is what I give to her. I pray for her not to abuse it, for she is the woman that I love, and her name is music." Um, it was really a reflection of my poetry and music. Um, uh, okay, so you guys can still see me. Cool. Um, that's weird. Um, that's not shown on my end. Anyway, so you can find my my work at my on my website, uh, charlesgatesjr.com. That's C H A R L E S G A T E S J R uh, forward slash dot com. I have uh, links for both my Amazon. Uh, uh, books. Well, it's sold on Amazon, but it's also sold on Barnes and Noble. And uh, you can click the button uh, in my author booth. That will also take you to the Amazon sites. Um, but uh, yeah, I prefer people going to my website though, so I can change that when needed. Um, anyway, um, so. You can choose which book you want to purchase, my novel or my poetry. And once you do, if you read my book, even if you love it, if you hate it, leave me a review. That is how P books win award awards. That's how books get noticed by the industry is our the reviews. They trust reviews. The people trust reviews, not the uh, comments of the one who wrote the book. They trust the reviews of those who read it and either loved it or hated it. Even if you hate my book, please comment and leave a review and tell me why. It's very important either way. So um, I also want to give a shout out to my one of my best friends, uh, Wesley Bartlett, the author of Immortal Martyr, that which is his stage name. Uh, you can search him up in the address, address bar, um, search bar in the uh, on this site, um, Festival of Storytellers. So, um, yeah, so that's all for today. Uh, come back tomorrow for more. God bless you. Be blessed and stay blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.